So anyway, the next step, now that we've handled all the hip roof problems, is to look at staircases. A stairway involves a couple of, uh, a lot of vocabulary. So let's start going through some of that. First thing we're going to look at, of course, that comes into factors in the stairway, is the thickness of the floor. So we have the floor thickness. And this includes the joists, the subfloor, the finished floor, all that has to be included in the floor thickness. Um, you don't include like carpeting or anything like that because you're going to assume that not only is that finished floor going to be carpeted, that the stairway is probably going to be carpeted as well. So that thickness offsets itself when you carpet the stairway. Next, we have the distance between the bottom of that floor and the floor below it, which is a ceiling height. The two of those combine to make something called the total rise. So the total rise is just the ceiling height plus the floor thickness. Make sense? Then of course your stairway goes down like that. Pretend that looks like a stairway. Each step then has a riser height. The packet I'm going to give you refers to this as the unit rise. It's the rise per single step. Then it has a tread size or tread width. Packet I'm going to give you refers to that as the unit run. <clears throat> and then something very important, and probably the most violated part of code in a staircase, comes from right here, from where the edge of this floor is down to the surface, the, the nearest horizontal surface of the stair, straight down, is called the head clearance. The head clearance is very closely related to and often determined by the distance from where the floor is cut off to where it continues called the floor opening or the stair opening. So what we're going to look at today we're going to look at, first of all, determining what your exact unit rise is going to be. Second of all, we're going to look at determining how big your stair opening has to be in order to get your required head clearance. Because the size of the stair opening is the big factor in that. So. You look confused, Andrew. What's wrong? The floor opening, the stair opening. Yeah, that's just how big the hole in the floor is. So first thing we need to find in any of these is the total rise. So let's say that we have a stairway where the ceiling height is eight foot one and an eighth. Why did I go eight foot one and an eighth? Anybody? Well, eight foot one and an eighth ceiling height is standard. You have eight, it's, it's figured you have an eight foot wall, right? Five eighths sheeting a sheetrock on top. So that brings that eight foot one and an eighth, that brings it down to eight feet and half an inch with that five eighths of an inch sheetrock on the ceiling. And then that gives you a half an inch for finished flooring. So you still have a full eight foot ceiling. Also, the other reason why they have that extra half an inch in there is so that when you, you do your ceiling first, when you sheetrock a wall, let me go up here. So let's see, here's your stud wall, here's your ceiling. You'll sheetrock your ceiling first with the 5 8 inches, then you put your half inch sheetrock on the wall. They prefer that you leave a half inch gap at the bottom of your sheetrock for a couple of reasons. One, if your floor gets wet, it doesn't siphon into the sheetrock, or it doesn't soak into the sheetrock, wick into it. 
Also, it's just easier to install the sheetrock if you can get under it and lift it up rather than having it tight from the floor. You guys haven't done sheetrocking much yet? Just started today. Just started today. Oh, it's good stuff. And let's say we have a floor thickness here of 13 and 7 eighths inches. I went with 13 and 7 eighths just because that makes that add up to an even number of inches. So now we need to find our floor thickness. Or not floor thickness, we need to find our total rise. Our total rise is our floor thickness of 13 and 7 eighths. Plus 8 feet is how many inches? 96. So 96 plus 1 and 8 is 97 and 1 eighth. That is 111 inches total rise. Yeah, I just converted 8 foot 1 and an eighth into 97 and 1 eighth inches. That's all I did. So 111 inch total rise. Next. On, estimated unit rise. Have you guys talked about stairs at all yet? Saw a video. Saw a video. Um, towards the middle of this semester, you guys will start working on staircases. You actually maybe even build a winder and stuff like that. Um, two years ago is when they had extra time. That's when they did that spiral staircase in there. But anyway, have you guys talked at all about what your, your standard unit rise is for a staircase? What to use? Well, 18 is your, your rule of thumb for the tread width. Tread width plus your riser height is 18. So if you go a 7-inch rise, you do an 11-inch run, which gives you 18 inches. Or you try to stay close to that. You know, you might, yeah, well, you might have 6 and 12 or 7 and 11 or 8 and 10. Or kind of, I don't think you're allowed to go over 8 anymore. I think it's 6 to 8 inches is what's code anymore. Used to be you could go up to 9 if you had a, if you'd do a 9 and 9. But I know a 9-inch tread is not allowable anymore. It's not big enough. At least not in, in most internal applications. For some applications, it is. I always use a 7-inch unit rise. Now, I know there are you know, some textbooks that say you start out with an 8-inch unit rise or whatever. I always start out with an estimate of 7 inches. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to have a 7-inch rise because I need to figure out you know, that seven inches might have like two inches left over, and I, might, I don't want to have a two-inch step at the bottom of my staircase or anything like that. So I'm going to use that estimated unit rise to figure out how many rises I need. So I'm going to use that to find the number of rises. So I am going to take my 111-inch total rise divided by seven inches which is going to give me 14 point yeah, 14. Point four two eight five seven one four three approximately, correct? No? Oh shoot. I yeah. I did one oh one, not one eleven. Sorry. Helps if I don't try to show off. Huh? So one oh five, yeah, fifteen point eight five seven one four. To nine approximately, right? So now here's the thing I got 15.8, 15.85, 15 15.86, somewhere in there. I either have to go with 16 rises or 15 rises, one of the two. If I go with 16 rises, it's going to be just a little less than seven inches. If I go with 15 rises, it'll be a little bit more than seven inches. I usually like to go a little bit more than 7 inches. I don't like to go under 7 inches. So let's take a look. Let's see what each would be. I take 111 inches divided by 16. Let's just test that out to see what we get. 6.9375. Which, of course, is 6 and, we're going to subtract the 6, times 16 should be 15 sixteenths. That's not a bad riser right. 6 and 15 sixteenths. Just a sixteenth under 7 inches. Let's try to do 15 rises and see what that comes out to be. 111 and 15 is what? 7.4. 7.4. 7.4. 
that's 7. We're going to take that 0.4 times 16 is 6.4. So 7 and 3 eighths inches. That wouldn't be a bad riser height either. So now we need to decide which one do we want to use. Well, I'm going to make an argument that we want to use the slightly larger one. Why? Well, we're allowed up to 8 inches. What's that? Well, not only that, but having one less rise means one less tread, which means it's, the stairway doesn't take up near as much room in the house. Make sense? So we're going to go with 7 and 3 eighths inches for my unit rise. Next, we can find something called the total run. The key to the total run is to figure out how many runs we're going to have. We have 15 rises, risers, how many treads are we going to have? Are we going to have 15 treads too? No, why not? Well, you have a stairway. If you look here, we have one, two, three treads, but we have one, two, three, four risers. Because you have a riser at the top and a riser at the bottom, you always have one more rise than you do runs, one more riser than you do treads. So 15 risers only requires 14 treads. When I build treads, my treads are always between 10 and a half and 11 inches, just because that's a nice, comfortable size to step on. You get under 10 inches and it's, your, your foot doesn't feel comfortable on it, your toes are hanging off and stuff like that. For this one, I'm just going to use an 11 inch unit run. In other words, that's an 11 inch tread. The reason I use 11 inches is because two 2 by 6s side by side is exactly 11 inches. I know a lot of people use the pre-cut you know, 12 inch treads or whatever more. They're expensive and I don't like them. If you screw down 2 by 6s they're just screwing them, glue them, they're just as good. So anyway, I'm going to use an 11 inch tread, which means my total run is going to be 14 runs times 11 inches each, or 154 inches. Otherwise known as 12 feet 10 inches of run. Of total run. What do you think there? Easy enough so far? What's that? It is a lot of steps. You are correct. Next thing we need to figure out is head clearance. You guys know what code is on head clearance? Code is six foot four. 76 inches. I almost always build my head clearance at six foot eight if possible. The reason being is that six foot four head clearance, let's say my, my floor starts right here, that comes down right to here. It doesn't matter whether it comes down above here or let's say the floor is right here. It comes down here. Your head clearance is still the same because it's measured to the closest horizontal surface. It doesn't take into account that this here, the nose of this next tread or next step is only a few inches away. If you come walking down here and you happen to be leaning forward a little bit, you're going to hit that. So you got a seven inch, seven inch riser here. Six foot four becomes five foot nine in a hurry. Six foot eight. Well, okay. So if it goes down to six foot one, if you're leaning forward, it's not a big deal because most people are, you know, after a little bit below six feet still. And that's one thing is people get taller though. Hasn't changed yet, but I anticipate some of the codes changing as far as door openings and stair openings and stuff like that. Um, I strongly suspect that in the next 20 years, you're going to see some changes there. What's that? Duck to get in. Yeah. But you see some of these older houses. I mean, some of these older farmhouses where they made their own doors and everything, some of those are like six foot two inch doors. I feel uncomfortable going through some of them. So anyway, we've got, let's use the six foot eight, which of course is 80 inches if you do the conversion. But we also have a floor thickness. Our floor thickness was 
13 and 7 eighths inches. That gives us 93 and 7 eighths inches. What we just found here was the required rise, required drop, if you want to look at it that way. So from what that's saying is from the floor level, we need to drop a total of 93 and 7 eighths inches to have enough head clearance. Did you ever see where the 93 and 7 eighths came from? 13 and 7 eighths was our floor thickness. Because you have to get below the floor before you can even start to get the floor, the head clearance, right? Head clearance isn't to the top of the floor, it's to the bottom of the floor. So we need 93 and 7 eighths inches. So the next step in head clearance is to find required amount of rises, required number of rises. So we're going to do 93 and 7 eighths divided by how many inches was it per rise? 7 and 3 eighths inches per rise. So I'm just going to do it on here. 93 sorry, do this. and 7 eighths divided by 7 and 3 eighths is 12.73. We need a minimum of 12.73 rises. This number here is always rounded up. So that means we're going to need 13 rises. Does that make sense? To get our minimum head clearance. Next step, required runs. If we need 13 rises, how many runs do we need? 12 runs. Very good. Always one less than the number of rises. Finally, stair opening. The stair opening is the number of the required number of runs times the tread width, the unit run. So we have 12 runs times 11 inches is 132 inches otherwise known as exactly an 11 foot stair opening. What do you think? Good, good stuff? A lot of stuff it is. Do you want to see one more example or do you guys want to try some homework? Try some homework? Okay. Let me grab the packet for you. So in this packet you're looking at page 311. I want you to do numbers 1 and 2. And that's it. Two problems of homework.